what Boyer says is, you know, um, that trademarks allow companies to um, monopolize themselves from competition. We know trademarks last forever. It allows them also, as he says, to censor critics. And this, this is what will, or try to censor critics. And even the threat of lawsuit can sometimes censor critics, okay? Um, but the important part is like, what happens when brand names become part of our language, becomes a part of our everyday culture? And that really makes it really hard for us to separate ourselves, our language from trademarks um, and our expressions from trademarks. And then I'll talk about examples from the chapter. Okay, so here's an example. Y'all know this. This is a very distinct trademark. It's the Starbucks logo with the siren, right? We know it's distinct, right? It's very distinct. Okay, Chiron Dyer um, did this. This is the consumer horror play, right? And his was part of an art project where he was making a critique on consumer culture, on the fact that Starbucks are in every shopping mall, shopping center, old parts of Venice, you'll see, like, like they're everywhere. And a little bit about like sort of the culture that, you know, he thought that Starbucks was cultivating. Now, Kyron Dreyer is interesting. He works in the advertising industry. And a lot of like these subversive art industries, um, you'll find that um, you have a lot of people who work in the ad industry who actually do this type of stuff. And it's because they work for advertising agencies that have very conservative clients that want to you know, make conservative ads. And I, I don't mean politically conservative or anything like that. I mean just very safe ads. And so a lot of these, um, these creative type people will do their own art projects. So Kyron Dyer put the Consumer Horror logo online. He also put it on coffee mugs and t-shirts and keychains and stuff like that. Um, it was part of his series of works called Lowest Common Denominator. Well, obviously Starbucks re reached out and said, oh, hell no, no. And he was like, well, my use is fair. I'm commenting on Starbucks. It's clearly, you know, um, for commentary and criticism. It's a, it's a fair use, and fair use does exist in trademark. The problem was this. He put that shit on products that Starbucks makes. Now, quick glance at the logo. Whew. Right? If you just see that and it says consumer whore, you probably just think it's a Starbucks logo. Right? Like, you wouldn't you know, really read it, right? And so in that sense, it could be very confusing to consumers. They could, they could buy a coffee mug thinking it's a Starbucks mug or something like that, and it's a consumer whore mug. Or someone who bought one of those mugs could be misbranding, walking around drinking out of one, could be misbranding um, Starbucks and making them, them look bad. Okay, so the, like, Kyron Dyer was wanted to go to court for it, but you know, he smartened up, he, although he claimed fair use. Now the problem here would be this. If we were to kind of think of a way to padam this, purpose, right? It's clearly transformative. It's clearly building on the original, it's making a critical statement, It'd be a fair use. Under um, uh, nature of the original, a logo is creative, and in this fact, it's very distinct, it's fanciful, so it would be not fair. Amount used, substantial similarity, qu qualitative amount, you know, quantity, quality, all of it, not fair. Which brings us down to, as I said, in most fair use cases, market harm. Purpose and market are going to be, if it's fair in one or both of those, it's usually going to be a fair use. The problem is with trademarks is it's almost always going to be market harm if you put it on goods or services um, you know, that are, are provided or sold by the brand name. In this case, coffee mugs and stuff like that. Chiron Dwyer could sell prints or postcards or stickers or anything like that. Um, could have an art show and charge people thousands of dollars to come look at it. That's totally fine. It's the fact that it was on products that Starbucks sold that was the problem. It was the product. So they settled out of court and you can still find the, the image online. So is it a fair use? The answer is no. <laughs> because it creates market harm, consumers may be confused. Is it blurring or tarnishing? Let's think. 
Is he using Starbucks to sell coffee mugs or is he making a comment on Starbucks and selling mugs? It doesn't make Starbucks look bad. The answer is it's tarnishing. Okay, here's an example of Dabachino. Uh, Dabachino are made by Hitman Glass. It's an Oregon glass blower. And these were uh, Frappuccino styled um, bongs. Um, and uh, one thing is uh, Starbucks owns the word Frappuccino. Obviously, it's a portmanteau. It also owns the, uh, the beverage container um, because you look at that beverage container and you associate it with a you know, Starbucks or a Frappuccino. So that's shape they own. So Hitman Glass uh, ripped off Starbucks um, and he, you know, used the siren logo. I mean, you, you can see and, and it says Hit, Hitman Dabachino. Um, and it's pretty clearly looks a lot like a Starbucks product. Okay. Um, and this is what Starbucks said. And these sold for thousands of dollars, like they weren't cheap. Um, and this is what Starbucks said. Starbucks argued that Hitman, right, quote unquote, willfully intended to create an association with the Starbucks marks and to capitalize upon the success and popularity of the Starbucks marks to sell their products. What uh, happened is they ruled in favor of Starbucks and uh, Hitman Glass had to pay $400,000 in damages. Now, if you're looking for a Dabachino, there's plenty of uh, cheap knockoffs made um, made in other countries like India that you can get you can get online. Um, but um, as far as I know, Hitman Glass is out of business because of, because of this. Um, but anyways, let's let's think about it. So if we look at this and we think about it, okay, is his use fair? Hmm. Is this commentary or criticism of Starbucks, or is it simply exploiting? Starbucks. Simply exploiting, right? It'd be not fair. Uh, nature of, uh, of the original logos and mugs, although you may not think, think are creative, are actually creative elements. Uh, all logos are creative. Amount used, I mean, he uses the whole damn thing. And would consumers be maybe confused? Fuck yeah. Like, again, like a consumer could think that Starbucks is making bongs. There's potential for it, right? Uh, consumers are dumb <laughs> or can be dumb, okay? Um, so no, not a fair use. Now, is this blurring or tarnishing? So is Hitman using uh, Starbucks marks and shapes um, to sell products or to make Starbucks look bad? Now, re regardless of where you morally stand with um, you know, cannabis use, um, the answer is this is blurring. If you look at what Starbucks says, you know, um, he is willfully intended to create an association with the Starbucks marks and capitalize their on their popularity to sell uh, his glass. And that is blurring, okay?